Guys, a popular video I have made is called How to Invert, but I'm still getting a couple questions, so today's vlog is How to Invert 2. I'm gonna teach you how to invert. Welcome to the Pole Vault Vlog. We talk everything. The inaudible. Blah, blah. Guys, as always, if you like these, there's a button for that. Push the like button. Helps me out. If you really like these and you'd like to see more of my face and get more information and not miss any updates, hit the subscribe button. And then there's a little bell every time a bell rings. An angel gets his wings. I'm getting a lot of questions from the live stream. A live stream will be happening. The biggest question I have for you is what time of the day is best? I launched these at noon, but I realize people are in school or work, so they might not be able to sit down for a half hour to an hour and check out a live stream. So what time of day is best to have this set up? So let me know in the comments below. Um, maybe I'll figure out how to put a pole over here, or maybe it's over here. I can never tell what side they're on. Time of day and where you guys are located. That would help. <laughs> guys, the Team Hoot training programs are still up if you want them for 10% off, the deal ends on May 11th. So get those in quick. It'll take your training to a new level. If you're a coach, it'll take your program to a new level. They're just great. <laughs> also last week I made a video because I was getting a lot of questions about Team Hoot Camps and how to do them and the cost and everything. So I made a whole video about it. By having me travel to you, it saves the program money to spend on poles and equipment that could that could better help it grow even more. And depending on the size of the camp and how you guys want it to run, since I work with you to create it, we can make it so your program brings in money too. Get the knowledge, help your athletes, and it's a win, win, win for everybody. And Fun. since I launched it, my schedule's been filling up really quick, which is exciting, because I just, I didn't want to sit at one spot all summer. I wanted to move around and help with a bunch of different people and get to travel. So if you're a coach or a club, contact me and I'll give you all the information you could ever want. If you're a kid, Send the video to your coach, tell them how it's going to help your program, it's going to help you, it's going to help you be safer. And if you don't have a coach, send it to your AD. ADs are all about saving money and keeping their event safe. <laughs> Speaking of camps, hey Sean, that's a great transition to the next thing you were going to talk about. Thanks Sean, I thought so too. I've been getting updates from the Athens camp already. Cade told me he PR'd by a foot already. Gabby's back to jumping at PR bars. And the two little 7th and 8th grade kids, I think they're just 7th graders. Yeah. They both jumped like a foot higher, they both PR'd. It counts. I'll make you look cool. People have been telling me I'm slacking at sh testimonials. So I actually have a testimonial thing set up on my page. So if you guys have been impacted by these videos, you've done a training program or a camp, or I reviewed one of your videos. Um, if you guys could give me a testimonial, that'll be awesome. I'll put a link to it down in the description below. And you can also go over to my website and just send me a testimonial. I hate asking for help like that, but, but I hear it helps businesses grow. I got this question about 10 times last week is when I do a review. How is that little cue going to fix my vault? It seems so insignificant and small that it won't. They look little, but in a chain of events, those little chains are huge. Well, the pole vault kind of works that way. And the best demonstration I found of this is this. Think of that very first domino as one of these little tweaks and see through the chain how it can make this giant impact. Pretty cool, right? All right, so let's talk about the pole vault invert. Boom. Two things I want to talk about. People are confused about the rowing aspect. I hate the word row. Some people use the word row and they think it's like canoeing. That is not how it works. Okay, I'm gonna try and keep this as simple as I can. Get upside down on the pole. You need to point in the direction the top of the pole is pointing. You see a lot of people flag off. Here's where their feet are. They're not level with the pole. If you do the old school rowing technique, like the row, row, row your boat, which a lot of people get stuck in that habit because they hear the word row and they associate it with a canoe. And they're like, I've been on a canoe. I know what that's like. That's not how it works. Because watch this. If I do this with my arms, I am not level with the pole, right? Pole's over here, my feet are there, I'm gonna flag off. Instead of moving the pole, if I flip my body, because that's how you look at it in the vault, right? All you have to do is pull this elbow in and put the back of your hand under your chin. Look at that! Now I'm level with the pole. And if I flip this upside down, I look like I'm inverted on the pole. Some people get confused about what this feels like, but if you've ever held a pole, you know what it is. Look, that easy, that's what it's like to be upside down. This is how you start running with the pole. Now I'm upside down. Look at that. Right hand, right quad. Left hand right under your chin. And you can pull and turn and wham! PR by like a foot. Once you plant the pole, people like to think about rowing like this. 
and then they keep pressure on this bottom arm too long and they get to this position and this is, you can't pull vault from here because they're trying to lock this hand down tight and now there's no way to get inverted on this pole so they start doing this like back wiggly wonky so don't row your canoe roll the pole up and forward and as you lock it down and start to extend yank that thing in you gotta pull that arm into your chin does that make sense I hope that helps with some of the inverting stuff because the swunch work for people people are like oh yeah swunch Wonk. but then their hands are like this so it's more of like a row and then as you extend through it's like a wonk, and then you pull that pole into vertical this arm is the engine this does all the work this guides it so if you're guiding the pole and it's over here you're shooting crooked if you pull it in over here I'm crooked still if you pull it here you're vertical with the pole and you're gonna have more energy and then later we'll talk about the pull and turn and all that other fun stuff because the turn is confusing people too future vlog did that answer some of your questions let me know if you have any other questions I'll I'll put it I'll actually while well, you're watching it so it's in this vlog in a couple days I'll cut it out of the other vlog and post it as a separate video too for educational purposes you guys seem to like those so you don't have to listen to me talking about other garbage tea let's review some videos all right guys first video is from Ryan uh, Ryan sent a couple of videos before in the past, so let's take a peek here. Great jump. Now here's the thing I'd like to stress before we start doing this. As these big meets are coming, uh, for coach, this is mainly for coaches, the way you should be coaching should be less technical and like one or two things that are gonna have the most bang for your buck. If you start putting too much stuff into a kid's head and they go to a state meet or a conference or thinking too much, everything just goes out the window and then you're like, oh man, the kid choked. It's like he didn't really coach, he didn't really choke. Maybe you choked on your coaching by giving them way too much information and too much stuff in your head makes it so your body can't just do what it wants to do. He's got a big meet coming up and the biggest thing he can do right now is just think about hitting the pole before the pole hits him. The jump is so good. It just, right now, right when he hits it, it kind of throws him back a little bit. It's like, plunk, he gets rocked. So if he thinks about hitting it and then pushing it up and forward, hitting the pole, anticipating the hit like you're about to hit a baseball. That's gonna have the most bang for his buck when he goes into these big meets. Sick jump, man. Let me know how it goes. I'm really excited to see some progress here. All right, so next video is from Alex. He's got a really great jump here, but he looks just a little out to me. And you can kind of tell because as the pole moves forward, it kind of stops and then sinks down and then shoots up. Where you kind of want to see this continuous up and forward motion. And it looks like he kind of falls off the top of the pole. That's pretty common as being a little too far out. So I just told him to move up a little bit and think about leaning forward when he does move forward. That'll help everything just be a little bit bigger and he'll take off and blow it up. Sorry, dogs are barking. Technically, it looks pretty good. We just need the energy going in the right spot. Whoop! All right, this next one is from Ryan. This is Sarah. Holy running mechanics. Guys, this is how you run. Do you guys want to know how to run like a pole vaulter? Holy yes, that is a great run. I wish ever, I wish I could just like take your running superpower and give it to everybody else. <laughs> it's so good. And they were trying to work on that bottom arm a little bit. Some of that plant video I made a couple weeks ago and told them to do a ton of wall plants. The, the easiest way to get used to using that bottom arm, you know, some people coach not to use it. So there's a lot of ways to to do this, so that's just the way I coach it. You don't have to do it this way. You just get, she's had it, it hit so many times, and if you do t so many straight pole drills, people get used to just pulling that in. So then when the pole starts bending and you wanna start, you know, directing things a little bit, they don't know what to do yet. So plant into a pit like 500 times, get turn that into a habit, and then once you start doing that, then you can start playing with some other stuff. Cause it looks like right now, if she could just put a little bit more pressure into that bottom hand, and then have just a little bit bigger swing, all that energy is just gonna be flying in the right direction. Such a good jump. Yeah, I love it. So try those little things, but yeah, everyone run like that. Yeah. All right, this is Lucia. Um, he said he's only been jumping, I, this, this, this was hard to believe. He said he's only been jumping for three months, two months, and just got a PR of 13.1. Holy crap, it took me three years to jump that high. First things first, pole's too small, grip's too low. So go up a pole, I'd go up in length, uh, same weight, and then go up like a handhold. 
and that's gonna feel even better. It's just you can see how fast he's getting to the bar. That just that's that's pretty common as pole being a little too small. That's a quick fix. And then second is some of that stuff we've been talking about with that invert. So his bottom arm's way down there, and then he rowboats it, and it's really far away from him, right? So the poles cross half his body, and he's flagging out at the bar versus coming off the top. I'm pointing at the thing, and you guys can't see it. But instead of coming up here, his legs are going this way. So if he had that left arm under his chin, his feet would be going up instead of out. That's where this invert stuff is super important. So combining invert, the first invert video with this new one I just made, you guys should know how to invert pretty quickly. And if we just continue to watch it, keeps pushing down with that left hand, still horizontal on the pole versus vertical on it. And he's trying to save it here, but it's, and he makes it. But instead of jumping 13-1, he could jump 14-1. Great jump, man. Thanks for letting me use your video as like an example, but two months? Who are you? Some kind of spider bit you and turned you into a superhero. <laughs> All right, next video is from Caitlin. She sent two videos too, so we'll check them out. So what I told her initially is just to, again, go up a handhold, because if we watch the pole, barely bends, and then it's just so fast that it's unloading before she can catch the ride. And the way you catch the ride that I've found, it's a little different from everybody. If you really want to know how to catch the ride, ask Mondo. He's figured out, he's a master at it. But to be completely inverted while the pole's still bent, that was that always helped me out the most. So we're not inverted and the pole's already straight and then it just makes you flag off, right? So that's the first thing I told her. And, and we wanted to work on the plant a little bit, but I'm gonna use her videos again to help with some of that inverting stuff. So if we watch this again, she wanted to fix her plan a little bit, so that's what we talked about. But if we watch where that left hand goes, it's right on the side of her body, right? And then that top hand right here isn't locked down. So then it's what happens is you start flagging off, and then you try and save it, but it's almost impossible because this hand's not down and this arm's not up, so then everything starts flying off crazy. So to get that invert working, you guys, left arm under your chin, right arm locked down on your right quad, and you guys will be flying up through the pole. Thanks for sending videos, you guys. You guys are awesome. And uh, yeah, if you guys do send videos, there's been a lot of questions on how to send them to me. If you guys send me a video um, on through the website, I will email you as soon as I get the message. It might be a couple hours or five minutes depending on where I am. You just attach the video to the email and then you guys are off and running. That's it for today's vlog, guys. Um, be sure to write your testimonials. I'll leave that in the description below. Camps, I would love to do as many as I can. Let's fill up my schedule and I can just do a traveling team hoop camp. So bug your coaches. If you're a coach, bug me to get, make this happen. If you're a kid and you don't have a coach, bug your AD. Workout plans, May 11th at one o'clock. So get on that. Season's almost over, guys. With that being said, life is meant to be experienced and curiosity will get you there. You know what I'm saying. Ooh, yeah, yeah.